I'm going to demonstrate how to paint a curved leaf. This is a dead one which is curled up but live ones can curl too. So I'm going to pin these on the board and I'm going to demonstrate how you have to follow the mid vein of the leaf in order to construct the leaf around it whatever angle you see it at. So I'd make that as something like this coming down like that, down to the bottom and around. Now, having got your central vein, you now have a foundation on which to build that leaf. From my angle, not probably the camera's, but from my angle, I can see the back of the leaf here. So this part comes out, but then it folds back to show me the front of the leaf. So starting down here, that goes around there, and then comes back down here, and goes down to the bottom of the leaf. The other side, I know it starts in the same, roughly the same place, but I can't see it and it comes out about halfway through this curve. So I can put a line there, but I can't start drawing until about here, when I can then delineate the other side of the leaf. That way I've got, I'll curve that a bit more, I've got a leaf that is showing both front and back. Now this does not come down to here and start again here. This leaf turns over. You need to bring that around then you get your rubber. Rub out that little bit there because we can't, we know it's there but we can't see it. And This is really the secret with curving leaves. You know that that vein follows through but you can't see it. I'll do another one over here. This one really quite an interesting one. It goes down and across almost, oh, not quite a right angle, but it starts up here, fairly straight, and then like someone lounging on a banana chair, it goes out to about there. Now, this starts a little way, there's the stem where it connects to the branch. Now this starts out here, goes down and out again. And then it comes right down, passes over the mid vein and down to the bottom. There's a little bite out of it and finishes up there. I think that needs fixing because it was too sharp an angle. It is peeping around and I can just see part of it. And then it disappears and it disappears roughly about where that meets that. So it comes through roughly about there. Now that doesn't look, in fact it should come further down there and I don't like the way that crosses over there. So I would like to move that slightly so that comes up there. It looks a whole lot better even if that was how it actually was. Now here we have to once again bring that leaf out to accommodate, in fact it comes out even further when I look at it carefully, bring that leaf out there and now we're having a leaf that looks a lot more like it should. Okay there's another one, another couple here, oh we have to do this little one here but I can tell that it follows down in almost an S bend. Something like that. There's a leaf coming out there, another one coming out there, and this one coming out the bottom. So I'll do these so I know how I'm fitting them in. That one overlaps just a little and the top half comes down and disappears down there. Consider an x-ray drawing. It's got to go there but you can't see it. That's okay. You can't see everything. That one comes out here and comes out quite deeply there and around there. Now underneath this we've got a leaf that comes around and reaches down there. I'm going to rub out that bottom line but I must keep that centre line in order. It just shows a little bit of the top of the leaf and this one comes right out here and around. Now I've drawn that but I know it can't be seen so I now can rub it out. If you don't draw it you could end up with a rather awful mistake. When you're drawing leaves that are overlapping 
you might have a leaf down here and another leaf behind it over here. Draw the two leaves, decide which one you want on top and rub out the one that's on the bottom. If you try to do the leaf like this, stopping, starting, coming up, and stop, stopping and starting, you will never get as good a result as if you do the two and then rub out the part that's not necessary. Now, here's another leaf over here, and that gives me an idea of where it's going. There's a sort of a bend up there, and it goes there, and it comes back up here. Now, you must keep with this vein. I can see the whole side of the leaf until it comes up I'll draw a line here, level with this, and then it turns around and follows the leaf back up. Here we go on the other side. It's actually quite fun when you start playing around with this. So this is the sort of thing you need to do on the telephone when you're talking to someone. There's the end of the leaf. Now I need to rub out these construction lines, if you like, or the edges. We know that the leaf has an edge. It doesn't stop, but we can't see it. But we draw it in, just so we can get things. I'm not very happy with that. I think I'll move that around to there. But nonetheless, I've still got my leaf overlapping. Now, if I put a shadow somewhere, it could be here, or it could be in here. It just depends how you want to portray the leaf and where the light's coming from. OK, this poor old leaf has had a, a lot of insect attack. In fact, I think I'll do the whole of the front of the leaf in the first wash. There's something else you don't have to worry about either. It's just staying totally within the lines. Once you've rubbed out those lines, it doesn't really matter if you were totally within them or not, as long as you are going in the correct direction. There's the back of the leaf, and it has quite a dark little stem. Now I'll let that leaf dry, 